Hey, good morning, girls. You should be watching this on Thursday. Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance, and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week so far. I hope everybody is doing well and feeling good out there. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the extremely highly requested case of Eliza Fletcher. Now, Eliza Fletcher is a very well-known and loved preschool teacher out of Memphis, Tennessee that comes from a great family. She's a mother, all that good jazz, who went jogging on September 2nd of this year, 2022, and didn't come home. Now, there's a lot of rumors circulating about what happened with Eliza. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys the whole entire story, the best of my ability, based off of very, very, very public information that is already out there and filtered through my own personal opinion. Make sure you go do your own research and form your own opinions though. Just don't show hate to anybody anywhere. But then at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on what I think happened as of right now and who all I think is involved as of right now. And I'm also going to share with you guys a personal experience of something that happened with me not too long ago and show you guys some receipts. So make sure you stay to the end for that. But other than that, let's just start at the beginning. Eliza Fletcher, who went by Liza, was a beautiful, vibrant, young 34-year-old mom who stood at about 5'6", 137 pounds, blonde hair, green eyes, and a smile that would light up a room. Eliza came from a very well-known family in Memphis, Tennessee. She was very involved with her church and was always pretty much seen if she wasn't at work with her two kids and her husband. Her husband, Richie Fletcher, married Liza in 2014. And from what I could find on Facebook, looks like they got engaged in 2013. Every photo that you see on their social media looks like every typical Facebook family with big smiles, happy lives, and a lot of love. Liza was a loved preschool teacher. She was so good with the kids. She sung to them. She did little videos with them. We're gonna sing This Little Light of Mine, okay? Ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And you can just imagine, like any of y'all that are parents out there, like you see these videos of Eliza and you see that like, you know your kids would love to have her as a teacher, right? She just seemed so precious and so sweet. However, Eliza wasn't your typical preschool teacher. See, Eliza's grandfather actually passed away in 2018 and he was a big deal businessman. And when he passed away, he left Eliza part of his inheritance of a $3 billion fortune. Yeah, $3 billion, not million, $3 billion fortune. So Eliza was a very rich preschool teacher, you know, that was just loving her life and loving her family. Now Eliza, along with those other things, was also a passionate runner. She loved to run. She ran every single morning at around 4.30 a.m. When they would travel, she would go running. She would go running with her husband, and she was also a part of the Boston Marathon. So when Eliza left her home on September 2nd at 4.30 a.m. to go for her morning run, nobody suspected 
a thing. Nothing became suspicious until her husband realized that like six o'clock came around and then 6.30 and then eventually 7 a.m. and Eliza still was not home. Eliza's husband, Richie, began to call people. He called the school, the university, he called different family members and nobody had heard from her. So at around 7.45 a.m., Richie called the police to report his wife missing. You can imagine how frantic he is. He's probably getting the kids ready. They're up. They're looking for mommy. You know, they're wanting breakfast. And he's on the phone reporting his wife missing, thinking all different types of things, right? Like, did she get hit my car? Or did this happen or this happen or this happen? Well, the cops end up coming out. They take a full report. They go knocking on doors. They begin to look for her. And as they started to investigate, they realized that at about 6.45 a.m., a biker had reported a cell phone that they had found on the road at around 6.45 a.m. Now, this cell phone had been broken and crushed, but there was also a pair of champion slides, you know, like kind of like flip-flops that were found right by the phone. They would go on to find that that was the area that Eliza's phone had pinged at. So they put the two and two together and realized that that was her cell phone. Detectives began to look into the surveillance footage around that area. And this is when they saw the unthinkable. They saw a GMC terrain truck pull up and stop. From what they could see, the truck had passed where Eliza was running, looked like it had seen her, pulled over to the side of the road and stopped and was waiting for her to run by. And as she began to approach, somebody jumped out and got her into the passenger side of the vehicle, obviously against her will. And obviously she did not go, you know, easily. There was quite a struggle. The struggle was allegedly so rough that they have not released the full video of her being put into the back of the vehicle. Well, in that struggle is when either her phone got broke or he, or the person that got her into the vehicle smashed her phone. And then also the person was wearing the champion slides and lost their shoes. The video would go on to show that the person got into the vehicle with her in there and was parked there for four minutes before driving off. Now, when the information about this was released, people began to talk. And when I tell you, they began to talk. They started spreading all kinds of rumors about the husband this and about the inheritance, okay? We've seen situations like this before about, you know, affairs allegedly taking place. See, there was rumors going on that there was a babysitter and there was an affair and all of this. But again, you guys, this is just rumors. This is just words that's circulating the internet. So you guys, I'm telling you, people were just coming up with all kinds of conclusions of where Eliza was. And then again, when you mix in that $3 billion fortune, I mean, it looks suspicious, right? Obviously it wasn't just the internet that was thinking things like this because detectives then went to Eliza's house and they confiscated her vehicle. Oh yeah. They towed it away. They went in her home and they brought out certain types of evidence, including gardening shears. Now, this was the thing that really got people talking, okay? You can imagine whether the family's involved or not. When the cops go into the home of the person that called 911 and brings out sharp gardening shears, Oh, people's talking. However, on that surveillance footage, they were able to get a license plate number for the vehicle that Eliza was put inside of. And they also sent those champion slides off for DNA testing. With the DNA on the slides, oh, they got a hit. And the DNA matched a man named Cleotha Abston. He goes by Pookie, okay? 38 year old man. Now, let me just tell you guys some of the history from Pookie or Cleotha. In 2000, Cleotha was charged with kidnapping, was actually convicted and sentenced to 20 years when he was just 16 years old. He was charged as an adult. The story goes, Cleotha was driving down the road and saw a man walking from a party that was like in this downtown area. The man's name was Kemper. He's a lawyer, okay, hear me out. Cleotha pulls on the side of the road, puts Kemper in the trunk of his vehicle, shuts it, and begins driving around with him and takes him to an ATM machine in order to force him to get money out. Now, he was making too much noise, 
Somebody ended up calling 911. The guy ends up getting away and Cleotha ends up being charged and sentenced to 20 years in prison, okay? It is also said or rumored, okay, that when Cleotha was only 12 years old, he was charged with a crime that we can't talk about. One that makes you register as an adult, if you know what I mean, okay? So he's got quite the criminal past, and he just got out in 2018 from that 20-year stint that he did, basically grew up in prison from putting that lawyer, Kemper, in the trunk of the car. But now get this, that lawyer, okay, that he put in the trunk of the car has ties to the Fletcher family, okay? He has ties to Eliza. As a matter of fact, allegedly, Eliza's uncle works at the same law firm that Kemper works at. So this is when things start getting real weird. People's like, mm, okay, wait a minute. She's got a $3 billion fortune, just happens to have ties, da, 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 da. People are trying to connect the dots and people are thinking, okay? Let's keep going here. So since Cleoth has been out, he's been working at a cleaning service and it's pretty unclear all the other things that he was doing. But when they ran the license plate on this vehicle, it didn't belong to him. It actually belonged to a woman named Gwendolyn Brown. Now Gwendolyn Brown lives in the Southeast side of Memphis in an apartment complex. And the cops went to her home and asked her if the SUV was hers. And she admitted that it was hers, but she refused to tell the cops how she knows Cleotha, but she was adamant about telling them that she wasn't his girlfriend. Now, when news reporters went there to talk to her, she did not want to talk. Check this out. Yes, I am upset. I'm very upset. I'm willing to talk. Are, are you Miss Brown? Yes, I am. Are you Gwendolyn Brown? Yes, I am. That was your car that Cleota was in? I just told you, yeah. when you leave that car, so we could be able to talk. She's very upset that her vehicle may or may not have been used, allegedly, in this abduction. And But she's not really saying why he had her vehicle at 4.30 in the morning in the first place. But nevertheless, I know most of us have loaned our vehicles to a person for whatever reason in some parts of our life, even if it's just your children, right? Driving your car that's in your name. So I can imagine the type of attention she's getting and she's not very comfortable, but she seemed pretty upset. As the cops continued to investigate, they found that Cleotha's phone pinged in the same exact area where the slides were found and everything went down. So you see they're, they're building this case against him very quickly and it ain't looking too good. And so cops began to search for him. They ended up going to an apartment where they found him. He was standing in the doorway and he tried to run and they chased him down and they caught him and they put him under arrest and they brought him in. However, he's not talking. He's not saying anything. And people began to spread rumors too that the reason why he's not talking is because somebody that paid him to snatch Eliza up is going to be paying his stuff and his fees. And so he's not worried about it. So he's not saying anything. But that also could just be a rumor. And remember, I'm going to tell y'all what I think at the end. So stick with me here. But at this point, Eliza had still not been brought home. And this is when Eliza's family began to beg and plead to the public and even offering up a $50,000 reward to somebody that could give information to bring her home or find her. More than anything, we want to see Eliza returned home safely. The family has offered a reward for any information that leads to her safe return. As the cops continued to search and try to find answers, they came up on a woman who said that they saw Cleotha at his brother's house acting really, really weird. As a matter of fact, she said that he was out cleaning the seats and the floorboards of that vehicle frantically and just being really anxious and just wasn't like himself. Now, when the brother was asked about it and the brother's name is Mario, he confirmed, oh yeah, man, my brother was acting strange. I don't know what he was doing. Da, 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 da. It was, it's weird. So at this point, you guys are all caught up with me, right? She disappeared on the second. Time has gone on. Cleotha has been arrested. All these ties are to him. All these rumors are, are circulating around 
every which way you can think of. As the cops continued to search for Eliza, one of the cops ended up finding Eliza's clothes in a trash bag and this was not looking too good. You remember the purple shorts and the pink top? So at this point, it's not looking too good. And it was also said that there was possible blood that was being cleaned up from that vehicle. And then on September 5th, a huge break in the case happened. Police continued to search and they searched for Eliza near East Person Avenue and Victor Street based on a lead from the FBI. An officer noticed car tracks on the grass next to the driveway of 1666 Victor Street, a vacant duplex residence. And then the officers got out of the car because they saw the car tracks and they smelled the smell of decay. And any officer or investigator or anybody that has been around decomposing flesh say it is a very distinct smell that once you smell it you know that smell when you smell it so the officers began to search around this vacant duplex and that is where they found an unresponsive female lying on the ground next to a set of steps near the driveway behind the home the scene investigation determined that the woman fit the description of eliza fletcher the family was asked to identify and it was just devastating from there there's a lot of rumors going around okay and and at first i wondered too like why would somebody just pull over on the side of the road snatch this woman up have her in the vehicle for four minutes. And we all know if you guys have been following Brian Laundry case and all these other Chris Watts cases and situations like this, in order to strangle somebody, that takes minutes, okay? And they were only parked there for four minutes. And then the body was discarded of. Like, why would somebody do this on a whim? And this is, again, when all these rumors began to circulate. Oh, it was a hired hit. It was this. It was that. da 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 so the press conference actually came out on Tuesday. And during the press conference, I was listening to it. And I, I listened to the first lady that was over the police department speak. And she just absolutely like so professional listening to her speak. Yesterday evening, September 5th, at approximately 5.07 p.m., the Memphis Police Department and other law enforcement partners discovered the remains of a body a human body in the rear of a vacant duplex apartment at the 1600 block of Victor Street. At that time, it was believed the unidentified body could possibly be the remains of kidnapping victim Eliza Fletcher. Further forensic investigation by the MPD traffic unit positively identified the body was in fact Eliza Fletcher. And then other people began to speak in different investigative departments, but then towards the end, the prosecutor spoke. And when he spoke, he said that they had no evidence or no reason to believe that anybody else was involved other than this guy, Cleotha. Now, he's then had his first appearance. He did ask for a public defender, said he didn't have the money for his own private attorney, and he hasn't spoken. And at first, when I heard the prosecutor say that, I'm like, how can y'all say that? How can y'all not look into it? But listen, as of right now, the way that I feel, I actually believe that this was a random abduction myself. At first, I went a little bit down the rabbit holes, but first of all, you guys, we gotta realize that not everything is a conspiracy, okay? Not everything has all these other elements. Now, situations like the Kylie Rodney case, oh, I still think there's foul play involved in that. I could be wrong, and hopefully we are going to find out, but I definitely think there's foul play involved. In this situation, when I found out that this man drove past her and then pulled over, I thought, you know what? And then the way he disposed of her body, I thought, okay, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe there isn't anybody else involved. Maybe this was just a man who had already done this before, had a history of doing these types of things. And then also, if you guys don't know, when you lock somebody up at a young age, which don't get me wrong, he needed to be locked up and obviously he never needed to get out, but who would have known that, right? He served his time. He was released and he re-offended, but he'd already done something like this. And allegedly when he was 12 years old, he took advantage of somebody else in another way too. 
And, you know, he grew up in prison. He knew that life and he probably wasn't afraid to go back and maybe even wanted to go back. Some people are like that when they get out. They're just looking for that next adrenaline hit so they can go back into the place where they feel comfortable. Because believe it or not, there are people that are institutionalized and they don't want to get out. I've had my own experiences running. And you guys know if y'all are following me on my Instagram or anything like that, I do run. I love running. I love being outside. I can't stand a treadmill. Oh my gosh, burn them all. But I have quit running since my last incident that I had happen on August 13th. I have quit running in public because I had an incident happen that really freaked me out. And I actually text one of my friends to let her know that there was a guy in a dark colored truck circling, with, not circling like around me, but he kept turning around, coming back and driving very slow. And it was creeping me out. It got to the point that before I could get a new text message to her, he had already turned around. He was an older man, probably in his, you know, he was probably 45, 48, but he had his truck and my friend told me, you need to go get to your car. Well, at that moment, I realized I'm a mile and a half away from my vehicle in a wooded area. What am I going to do? Right? You know, you can have all the mace on you or all of that. Unless you're running with an actual weapon, you never know. And it, it really freaked me out because if that man had decided to try something, I was extremely vulnerable in that position. And I shouldn't feel like that. Nobody else should. And I haven't ran in public since then. So when I put that together, along with what the cops are saying happened with this man and including his history, I tend to believe that this was a random act of a disgusting human that does not need to get out this time. So as of now, Cleotha is in jail and he has been charged with first degree murder, aggravated kidnapping and tampering with evidence amongst some other charges. And they also brought in, and this is another reason why I think that he probably acted alone. They also brought in a few more charges from a situation that had happened the day prior to Eliza going missing, including theft of identity, credit card fraud, which sounded like he went and took somebody, stole somebody's credit cards and stuff and robbed them. I don't know the details, but what it sounds like from the charges and then went and used the cards. I think one thing that I read said like up to $981. So he was already on this path. And then he rode by and saw Eliza, you know, running by herself at 4.30 a.m. and decided that he was going to steal something big. And he took her life. And he took her from her children and he took her from her family, allegedly. And how horrifying. And when he was in court for his arraignment, he did not look sad at all. And then when you have somebody like that, that has spent the majority of their life in prison, he knows what he's going back to and he probably ain't worried. And it's so sad. So sad. When he went to the arraignment, I did read an article that said five of her family members were already there at the court before it even opened. They were there and they were ready. These kids have lost their mother. Richie lost his wife. Her parents lost their child. Nephews lost their aunt. And it's just very sad. So what do y'all think? Do y'all think there's more to the story? Do you think some of these other rumors are true? Do you think that this is just a really sad case of an abduction by a senseless human that didn't care about nobody but their selfish needs in that moment? Let me know what y'all think down below. I mean, and always sending my heart out to their family and, and those babies. And it's very sad. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Other than that, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I love you guys. Thank y'all for watching. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust.